Welcome. In this video, we look at section 6.3, Probability in Games of Chance. We will look at the Bernoulli theorem, which is based on the Bernoulli trials that we looked at in the previous section, and we will see an application of Bernoulli's theorem to series of games. The Bernoulli theorem. Let's start off with an example. Say we roll a fair six-sided die ten times. What's the probability you'll get? And then I have several cases here. No sixes, one six, two six, three sixes. How about no sixes? That means that in 10 rolls of the die, not a single six ever appears. So every dot represents some outcome other than six. Well, there are five sixths probability uh, for each blank, and that happens 10 times, so five sixths to the 10th. That's our solution. But let me put this into a form that is a little bit more reminiscent of the Bernoulli trials that we had in the previous section. I might express this as 10 choose 0, because there are 0 sixes, times 1 sixth to the 0, because <laughs> the, the 6 never appears, times 5 sixths, the probability of not a 6, raised to the 10th. And so it's the same thing as I had previously, 5 sixths raised to the 10th, and we see the numerical approximation there. How about part B, exactly 1 6? So in 10 rolls of the die, exactly one of these is a 6. Uh, so how about right there? Well, how many choices did I really have? I had 10 choose 1 ways to place the 6. And for each of those 10 outcomes, 10 choose 1 is 10, for each of those 10 outcomes, the probability that that outcome occurs is 1 sixth times 5 sixths to the ninth. All right, moving on, exactly two sixes. Let's see how I can place a six there and there. How many choices did I really have? 10 choose two. And for each one of those outcomes, 10 choose two, for each one of those 10 choose two outcomes, the probability that it occurs is 1 sixth squared times 5 sixths to the eighth. And we see exactly the pattern, how it's moving on. Three sixes, how about there, there, and there? How many ways could I have done that? 10 choose 3, and for each of those outcomes, the probability that that outcome occurs is 1 sixth cubed times 5 sixths to the seventh. So this sort of leads us to a general statement, which is the Bernoulli theorem. So here we go. Suppose a trial is conducted, and an event occurs with probability p, like rolling a die and getting a 6. It occurs with probability 1 sixth. If the trial is repeated n times, then the probability of having exactly k successes is n choose k times p to the k times 1 minus p raised to the n minus k. In the previous example, I had n was 10 because I rolled the die 10 times. My k, well, it went. I tried several values of k, 0, 1, 2, and 3. The probability p, the probability of success, I guess what I was counting as success was rolling a, rolling a 6, and so that was 1 sixth. And then the 1 minus p, that was the, maybe you could think of it as the probability of failure, or the probability of this event not occurring, which was the 5 sixths, rolling anything other than a 6. Here's one for you to try. A false coin has probability of showing heads as 4 sevenths. What's the probability that with 10 tosses, we get at least 8 heads? Here's the numerical answer, but I want you to pause the video and try this. See if you can find the expression that gives you that numerical answer. And then start the video again to check your work. All right, let's take a look. So the solution is this guy right here. We actually add three terms where each term uses the Bernoulli theorem. Either uh, the head shows eight times, or nine times, or ten times. Series of games. This is a nice application of some of the thinking in the Bernoulli theorem. It's not exactly the Bernoulli theorem, but it's pretty close, and like I said, we use that same kind of thinking. Let's suppose that Team A wins against Team B with a probability of 0.75. So Team A is pretty good, uh, generally winning most of their games. In fact, generally winning about three-fourths of the games that they play against B. We might ask, what's the probability that A wins a best-of-three series? Or, what's the probability that A wins a best-of-seven series? 
or we can suppose that, by bad luck, Team A is down 0-2 to two in a best-of-seven series. What's the probability that A can come back to win the series? So I'll answer each of these questions individually over the next few slides, but just a real quick note about series. When I say the best of three series, it really kind of means the first team that wins more than half of the games in the series. So another way of thinking about this is that it's the first team to win two games. Likewise, when I talk about a best of seven series, it's the first team to win four games. In general, when you have a series of games, it's the first team to win more than half of the games. All right, let's take a look at problem A. What's the probability that A wins a best of three series? Uh, here's the numerical answer, 0.84. And I encourage you at any time, if you feel like you know where it's going, you feel like you know how to figure out the problem, stop the video, work it out, and see if you can get that solution. Otherwise, I'll just keep on going, and we'll talk about how to figure it out. All right. Well, let's break this into a couple cases. Maybe A can win two games right in a row. So A, A. Or perhaps it takes longer. Perhaps it takes three games in order for them uh, to find a, a winner and A wins. Well, A has to be the final winner because there's no way that B could win the last game and yet somehow A be the winner. So A definitely wins the last game. What about the first two? Well, remember how I thought about this best of three. It means that A wins twice. So one of these blanks has to be an A. There's one A in there, uh, which means the other blank has to be a B. One B. So I can either fill this out as A, B, or B, A. Either of those would work. Now let's figure out the probabilities that uh, these uh, these different scenarios have. In the first case, A and A. So that's 0.75 squared. How about the next situation? Well, there's two possibilities for the first two blanks. So I'll just go ahead and put a two times right in front. And in each case, there are two A's and one B. So the two A's looks like 0.75 squared. And the one B, that'll be 0.25. Lastly, if I really want to make this look a little bit more like the Bernoulli theorem, I, that 2 in front, maybe I could change that 2 into a 2 choose 1, which is 2. But I can think of it as two blanks, and I have to choose one of them to be the A. And there you go. So you add together those two possibilities, and that gives you the numerical answer, 0 0.84, approximately. Let's take a look at the second problem. What's the probability that A wins a best of 7 series? Again, here's the numerical answer down on the bottom. At any point, if you think you see where the argument is going, feel free to stop the video. I, I encourage you to stop the video and, and try to work it out on your own and see if you can get the numerical solution. Otherwise, I will continue on with the solution. Here we go. Again, there are several different cases for how long the series will last. At the very shortest, it could last only four games if A wins all four in a row. Again, best of seven means the first team to win four games or it could take all seven games. So here are the four different cases. Either the series lasts four games, five games, six games, or seven games. On the left extreme, for the series to last only four games, A has to win all four games in a row. And let's remember, in all situations, A has to be the final winner. If A really wins the series, we absolutely know that the last game is won by A. So that leaves all the blanks preceding the A up for grabs. There's some different ways we can fill that in. Now on the one hand, I know absolutely that in every series, A wins four games. So this tells me that among these blanks, there will be three A's. And how many B's? Well, in this case, one B. How about the next situation, six games? So I have five blanks to fill. There will be three A's and two Bs. And in the seven game series, that's the most exciting, by the time you got to the end of game six, the series was tied. There were three A's and three Bs. So what's the probability of each series length happening? 
in the four-game series, that probability is just 0.75 raised to the fourth. Now, how about the five-game series? Well, how many ways can I fill those blanks? It's four blanks, and there are three A's. So how about four choose three, which turns out to be four. There are four choose three ways to fill those blanks. And for every outcome, for every outcome, how many A's do I have? Four A's, so 0.75 to the fourth, and one B, 0.25. Next situation, six games. How many ways can I fill the blanks? Uh, it looks like there are five blanks, so five choose three. I'm focusing on the A's, and there will be three A's filling in those blanks. Um, the number of A's in total, 0.75, that'll be four. Just like always, it's 0.75 to the 4, 0.75 to the 4, 0.75 to the 4. But in this case, we introduce two Bs, so 0.25 raised to the 2. And in, in the last situation, six blanks. Choose three of them to be where the A's go. But in every situation, no matter how I choose the A's and the Bs, in every one of those outcomes, the probability that that outcome occurs will be 0.75 to the 4, times 0.25 to the 3. There we go. We filled in our four possibilities. We add those probabilities together, and it turns out that uh, that solution is 0.93. Something that I think is interesting, if you compare our result from part A to the result from part B, is that this guy is a higher probability. And I think that makes sense. And it's even higher than 0.75. If A is likely to win any individual game, then you would hope that if they play a lot of games against B, that A would definitely win the series. So yeah, think about that. See that that makes sense to you. Here's our third example. Let's suppose that by bad luck, Team A is down 0 to 2 in, the, in a best of 7 series. What's the probability that A can come back to win the series? What kind of cases do I have here? Oh, <laughs> once again, there's our solution, 0.63. That's pretty good. I mean, A still has a better than even chance of winning the series. Uh, what are the two situations here? It could be that the series is six games or seven games. And here's how to think about it. I'm definitely filling in the first two blanks with Bs, because that means... Uh, B has won the first two games, and now A has to try to come back. If A eventually wins the series, though, we also know that I can put an A at the very end. So how can I fill the blanks? Well, in the first case, what happens is that after suffering two losses at the beginning, A comes back and wins the next four games right in a row. That would be the best situation for A. Oh, let me go ahead and figure out the probability for that. I'm really interested in just the probability after the first two losses. Just based on the question, what's the probability that A can come back to win? So it's like I have a new starting point. Forget the two Bs. Now, going forward, what's the probability that A will win? So four A's in a row, 0.75 to the fourth. In this other case, how do I fill the blanks? Well, A has to win the series, so there's four A's altogether, which means that in these blanks, there are three A's and one B. So I can fill those blanks in four, choose three ways, and every outcome will have 0.75, four, four A's, and 0.25, one B. Add those two results together, and that's what gives us the approximation. Let's take a look at one last example in this series of games, and it's sort of a reverse question. Here we go. Team A plays against Team B in a best of five series. I got a new number, best of five. Team A has a 0.8 probability of winning the series. So in this case, you know the probability that A wins the whole series. Based on that, what is the probability that Team A will win any individual game? So we're going to run this uh, process in reverse. Oh, and once again, here's the numerical answer, 0.67. So at any point, if you think you see where the argument is going, I encourage you, pause the video, see if you can finish it out and come up with that numerical answer. Well, I'll continue like I did before, looking at individual cases and breaking it up into different lengths of the series. 
But when I need to do a calculation with the probability of A winning a game, I'm just going to use the variable P. So let's keep P as a variable and we'll just keep doing our calculations with that and see where it leads us in the end. A might win three games right in a row. A has to win three games to win the series. And the probability that A wins three games right in a row, that's P cubed. Or maybe the series lasts four games, in which case I have three blanks and then A wins at the end. The blanks are filled with two A's and one B. How many ways can I do that? Well, that's three choose two, and three choose two, that's three. That's where that three comes from. And I have P cubed, since, since there's three A's, and one minus P, that's for the B. Maybe the series lasts all five games. So A wins the final game, but the first four games had two A's and two B's. The number of ways to fill those first four blanks, that's four choose two. Four choose two is six. So six times, probability that A wins three times, and that B wins two times. Well, what do I do with this information? If I add up those three expressions, that's the probability that A wins this five-game series. So let's take those three probabilities, and we add them up. Because these events, after all, are mutually exclusive. They are disjoint. I, I can't win three games and win four games. So we add up the three probabilities, and I'll distribute out, and then I'll collect like terms, and there we go. So that's a, a simplified expression there. And now we set that equal to 0.8. I haven't used the 0.8 yet, right? So I need to solve 10p cubed minus 15p to the 4 plus 6p to the 5 equals 0.8. And this is a terrible equation to try to solve exactly. Uh, our algebra fails us. But fortunately, I don't really care about an exact, exact, exact answer. If I could find a numerical approximation, that would be pretty good. So what you can do with your calculator, or online, you can graph the polynomial, and you can graph the constant 0.8, and see where the two lines intersect. And so you'd end up with a picture that looks a little bit like this. And where they are equal, right at that point where they intersect, that's where you get the x value, or rather the p value, about 0.8. Six, seven. And there we go. So we have found our solution. The probability that A wins any particular game is 0.67, or about two-thirds. And there you have it. This is kind of cool. I like this, that using uh, very careful counting and some probability, we can come up with a way to figure out probabilities uh, with a series of games. Pretty neat.